Derek Craig here from Magnus Broadheads, and today we are going to do a refresher course on the Magnus Bullhead. Uh, turkey seasons are right around the corner, and so every few years I like to do a video like this, just uh, bring everybody up to date, um, you know, on shooting the heads and tuning and all that. So uh, nothing has changed in all these years. It's the same head since 2008 or nine, uh, but this is the 125 version. We also have this in a 100 grain version. Uh, here's one right here. Uh, it just happens to be a non-anodized feral. Um, but anyways, uh, this is the 100, a lot smaller. The 125 is gonna give you a lot more forgiveness uh, in flight uh, as far as that left, right, up, down, you know, margin for error. So there you go. Um, in every package, there's a DVD. I know that's kind of old school technology. People are like, what's a DVD? But we used to actually watch movies on these. But there is a series on here called Setup to Success where I basically take you uh, from zero to about 98% of all situations uh, when it comes to tuning and getting set up to, uh, to shoot these heads. Uh, very similar to what I'm gonna do here today, only today will be a little more condensed version of that. Uh, these same videos are also on the Magnus YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, type in Magnus Broadheads, you'll find us and you can watch those same videos there. So they do come in a three pack, uh, both the 100s and 125s in a three pack. We also sell them in a two pack that comes with two of the Magnus bullhead arrows. So um, why would we actually sell a bullhead arrow and what makes it different? Well, it is a longer arrow and it is a heavier spine arrow. And I'm gonna show you the details on why right now in my shop. So hang with me. All right, so I'm gonna show you why it's so important to have a full length arrow. Um, and again, we sell these at Magnus. So this is the bullhead arrow. Uh, I've got my bow here in my draw board, and I'm going to show you at full draw why it's this is necessary. So let me get things set up. All right, so I've got my bow in the draw board, and it is set at full draw. Uh, my bow is uh, set at 29 inches draw, so your mileage might vary on what your draw length is, but I'm going to show you how this lays out. All right, so this is my typical whitetail hunting arrow. Uh, again, 29 inch draw. So this is cut at about 28 and an eighth of an inch uh, from the uh, end of the shaft to the other end of the shaft. That doesn't include the tips or the knock. So let me throw this on here and show you where this lands at full draw, which is typical for most people. So at mo for most people at full draw, you can see the end of my arrow is within the arrow shelf. Um, I could even go shorter. A lot of guys shoot for roughly that midpoint. So if we took a bullhead and screwed it onto the end of this arrow, we can immediately see what the problem would be. This would be getting into the riser, okay? So that's where, why we need to use a longer arrow shaft when shooting bullheads. So let me change this out. All right, so now you can see I've got a bullhead arrow with the bullhead on here. And you can see the distance that I now have between the bullhead and the front of the riser at, again, at a 29 inch draw. Now, arguably you could say, well, I could cut this arrow down and get this closer, closer to the riser, which you could if you wanted to build your own custom arrows. I would caution you because I've done this before is I've cut some down and next thing you know, if you've got a loose grip and running your fingers uh, wide open, you could possibly catch a finger with a blade, especially if you get in an orientation where you got it say blade sitting down like this, you could easily in your grip, if you got a loose grip, you could catch that finger. So you just want to be real careful. Um, I went back to running full shafts because of that exact reason, but that's why we've got to use a longer, uh, arrow shaft. Another thing you got to watch too is you need to watch your sight housing clearance, especially if you're going to run a blade up. Uh, anymore, I typically run blade down, um, but running blade up, my bow is set up so I do have clearance. But if I was going to run this sight down lower because this is a, a adjustable sight, I could actually hit that blade into the sight housing. Ask me how I know because I've actually done that before and that was. Uh, not a good thing. So these are the reasons why you need to run the longer shaft. You kind of need to watch your blade orientation and be cognizant of it for your hunting situation. Blade down, you got to kind of watch too. At launch, you can get into, say, the bottom of a window of a blind if you're shooting out of a blind. So just the things to watch for when you run this setup. 
All right, so now we got the why out of the way when it comes to the arrows for the bullheads. Okay, so let's talk about how are we going to get up, set up to shoot the bullheads and what all goes into it. The first thing you really want to do is you want to, you've got to tune your bow and dial your bow in to the longer arrow and extra spine arrow. Uh, again, a lot of us, you know, shoot a lighter spine and shorter uh, arrow when it comes to our whitetail setups. Uh, or other big game. Uh, so you're going to this full length shaft and that heavier spine. So you want to tune your arrow to, or turn your, tune your bow to the arrow that we're actually shooting. Um, you can do that starting with paper tuning if you want to, or you can walk back tune. Um, I actually have one of these arrows without fletching on them and I'll do some paper tuning in a bare shaft and then also do it with my fletching and get things dialed in. I've already got my bow all set up and all dialed in. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your bow. Um, this is just happens to be a uh, Athens uh, Vista 33, but you can use really any bow you want. Um, I would encourage you to, if you can, get a bow with a deeper brace height. It becomes a little more forgiving. We can shoot these out of any bow. Just the faster a bullhead flies, the more critical the tune of the bow is. And so the more forgiving bows that have this deeper brace height uh, definitely make the whole process easier. Um, this is a 60 pound bow. I actually have it turned down to about 55 pounds. You don't need 70 pounds to kill a turkey with a Magnus bullhead. Um, in fact, there's a lot of guys in a 70 pound situation. I advise them to turn, turn it back down to 65 or 60 pounds. Uh, it just becomes a little more forgiving and that's really what you're looking for. So before we get into actually shooting, one of the things we need to talk about is how do we practice with a bullhead? Because you know, this gigantic head here was going to chew up targets. So do not shoot one of these heads into a layered, say, block type target or a bag target that's hanging like on the wall behind me or other foam type of targets, uh, even broadhead targets. You're going to destroy expensive targets and you don't want to do that. So the best way to do to practice with these is with a hanging pillow. Um, go to the dollar store, Walmart, wherever, and buy the cheapest polyfill pillow you can buy, and you can buy a pillowcase. Um, this happens to be a bunch of polyfill that's from an old body pillow that my wife was going to throw out years ago. And you can see it's all torn up and beat up. And I don't care um, about that because I'm going to restuff it into a pillowcase or another type of case uh, every time that I go out get ready to shoot. I probably had this stuffing for six or seven years and I just keep using it. So rather than spending money on pillowcases, which if you're going to buy pillowcases, buy just the cheapest things you can find. Most of us have a dog or a cat or we live out in the country or whatever and maybe we've got feed bags. I use dog food bags, cat food bags, Here's a bag from some corn from the winter time, putting some corn out for deer. Any type of bag, you're gonna throw these away anyway. Um, and actually, I prefer them over pillowcases. Why spend money on something you're going to throw away? So I would take all this polyfill right here and I stuff it down into this bag to make myself a new bullhead target. And just like that, we got a new target when I, and I'm going to destroy this. I'm going to destroy this in 10 to 12 shots, completely destroy it. I just grab another bag. So either take a marker and draw a circle, take a, a target sticky, whatever, any more. Um, this is just some black Gorilla tape. that's like inch and a half wide. I just tear off about an inch and a half long piece. And I just take, and put it on there. And I might put one here and one there and one there and gives me a point of aim, something to aim at. So that's all we need, okay? So then real quick, how do we set up for this? <clears throat> this just happens to be a paper tuning frame I made years ago for my bow. Um, this is out of PVC pipe, nothing fancy, just, I don't know, 18, 20 inches wide. I got a crossbar here. I got one up higher I can put paper on. Basically, get yourself some of these cheap clamps that you see at the uh, hardware store. Every time you check out, they sell them for like two or three bucks. 
although things are more expensive now, so maybe they're five or 10 bucks now, and just hang it up here. And there you go. Now you get a free hanging pillow. Um, you could, you don't have to have a frame like this. You could use a, uh, a clothesline. You could um, rig something off your kid's swing set, hang them off of a limb or whatever. This is just happened to be what I have and it's multi-purpose. Um, why do we want the free hanging pillow though? Is <clears throat> because when we're shooting bullheads, let me get one on an arrow here. When we're shooting bullheads, this pillow that is free hanging is now going to absorb the impact from this large blade, this surface area. So now when it hits, it's gonna absorb that. Now this is gonna penetrate into the bag. It's gonna tear this bag up. Again, you're gonna get six, maybe 12 shots out of this bag. Um, sometimes I'll tape them up with some packing tape, maybe get them extend a little bit longer. But you want when that hits, it's going to absorb that impact. Your arrow is gonna go halfway in and it's gonna hang there. You're not gonna destroy the blades. After you shoot every time, these blades will tend to want to sweep back a little bit. I push them all forward from behind. Be careful, these are sharp. And then using a number one size Phillips screwdriver, not your number two, which is probably your most common size, but number one is a little bit smaller. Just go and snug every one of these blades down after each shot. What that will do is it will give a little longer life to the blades and it will prevent the aluminum ferrule from the blade from digging into the ferrule. Now, if you when, when you do bend some blades, because you will eventually, or damage that ferrule, if that happens, Magnus has a 100% lifetime, no questions asked, no BS warranty. Take a picture of the damaged blades or ferrule with your phone, email it off to customer service at magnusbroadheads.com and all of your contact info and we'll send you a new one or new blades free of charge. Okay, so let's talk about shooting bullheads and actually do shoot some. So I've got myself a 15 yard range here. This is in a lean to in my barn. Um, it's springtime here and the winds just keep blowing and swirling and it just, it's easier to tune everything in a wind free environment or pick a day when there is no wind. Unfortunately for me, I can't seem to find one of those days lately. So I've set up 15 yards here in my lean to down to the other end. Um, I focus on 15 yards, maybe 20 yards and in. To me, hunting with bullheads is a short game. Uh, I've killed a lot of turkeys with bullheads, the bulk of which have been inside of 10 yards. I've killed a couple out at 20, 25, but the major vast majority have been at six, seven, eight yards. So I really focus about 15 yards in. I will shoot some at longer distances just to make sure everything's on, but I really don't plan on ever doing that in a hunting situation. Um, I just like the short game and so that's where I focus. But that's what I would encourage you to do is focus 15 yards in, maybe 20 yards in, maybe take some long shots, whatever. But um, really for a hunting situation, you really wanna be closer than 15 yards if at all possible. So I'm gonna take this down range and we're gonna uh, shoot some arrows and talk about flight and all that. All right, so right off the bat, I apologize if I'm a little bright and it's a little dark down there, but it's hard getting the balance and the lighting in this situation. But I do have a little action camera down there recording the, uh, the target. So we're going to start out with a field tip. And again, I talked about um, tuning your bow, uh, paper tuning your bow, uh, maybe even uh, bear shaft tuning your bow. Um, this bow is uh, has definitely been tuned. Um, everything's dialed in. I've been shooting field tips in this out to like 60 yards and broadheads as well. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to shoot a field tip. Okay, and you wanna make sure your field tips are all dialed in. Okay, so we are again at 15 yards and I'm gonna aim for the upper right of the red target down there. Right in there, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a fixed blade broadhead on a bullhead arrow as well. So. This is a 125 grain Magnus uh, buzz cut stinger. Um, it's orange because it's a practice head. Um, I just paint some practice heads orange and that way I don't have to worry about ever dulling them. But we wanna make sure we can get fixed blades to fly well before we go on to a bullhead, okay? 
So again, use the bullhead arrow, get a good quality fixed blade. Don't use an expandable that really negates the whole point. You want the fixed blade out there because you want, if your fixed blades are gonna fly well, then your bullheads are gonna fly well also. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go to the upper left corner of the red target. So the upper left dot. Right in there, okay? So we know we got field tips flying well. We know we got bullheads or broadheads flying well. Let's go on to a bullhead. Okay, we got our hanging um, pillow target down there. Okay, and uh, I tend to like, as I said, I think when I was doing the arrow video, I tend to like to set mine up so that the blade is down. Okay, um, ensures I got maximum clearance around my sight and everything. And now we are going to take our shot at the hanging pillow, right in the black square. Boom, nailed it. So I didn't have it clipped up very well, but it hit perfectly. We're gonna go take another shot just because. You can actually see right there in the piece of tape, right where the center of the point of the bullhead hit. So um, again, and so you're gonna push these forward and we're gonna tighten them up, but I'm gonna go throw this tape back up there and we're gonna shoot it again. <clears throat> All right, same arrow, same bullhead. Same target, just put it back up and put the tape back on. Absolutely perfect shot. All right, so there we are. There's uh, the three arrows and uh, there's the bullhead arrow, which saw me shoot the same one into the target two times. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just tighten them back down and keep on going. So that's it. Um, again, turkey season's around the corner. You know, Magnus bullheads, head and neck shot. Um, you know, I argue that uh, it's a larger kill zone than a body shot. It's an easier target to identify than a body shot is. This is the way to go, no meat damage, dead on contact, you don't have to trail the birds. It's just win, win, win all the way around. So there you go. Uh, Magnus Broadheads are made in the USA, uh, Great Bends, Kansas, lifetime, no questions asked warranty. Check them out at magnusbroadheads.com. As always, God bless and stay safe.